What is up, y'all? We are here for our energy oracle forecast for the week. I hope everybody's doing well. I usually make these videos on Sunday night, so my apologies, but I'm making our oracle forecast video and then I will be making our anchor message video. So stay tuned. Um, we'll have back to back episodes, but I think it'll be like the other day when we had like a little bit of a shorter episode because they both really are. Um, really interconnected and they build upon each other. So I went ahead and pre-shuffled and pulled our Oracle cards this morning because I wanted to have that context before I um, pulled our anchor message that goes into like the archetypal lessons that we'll be working with for the week. So it would give me more context and depth. So I have already pulled them even though we usually shuffle and pull them on camera. Um, and yeah, and so let's see. And so our energy forecast kind of gives us an idea of what kind of week is going to lie ahead, what the spiritual energy is going to be like, what the cosmos are doing with us, like the general kind of spiritual weather forecast, if you will. Mondays, we go deeper into our specific like lessons that we're dealing with through the week. Um, and so the, this is really interesting. I think it's really tying in with the uh, preparation leading up to Rosh Hashanah. Um, as, as a Kabbalah student, and I am a member of the Kabbalah Center, we do an entire month of preparation leading up to Rosh Hashanah to prepare the, the self um, for that day. And so basically the significance around Rosh Hashanah is that it is the birthday of the souls of all mankind. That was the day that Adam was created. Adam Kadmon, um, the human humanity was created. And so that is sort of a birthday for everyone every year. We're all Libras uh, on the inside. And so every year on that day, it's like, a judgment day where we get a new soul. We have a complete cleansing um, and we get to start fresh. However, the thing is, is that our consciousness, like we have to prepare our consciousness so that we don't end up with the same soul that we have now one day after Rosh Hashanah because we're still going in and around in the same the same patterns, the same beliefs, the same level of understanding. You know, we're still um, <clears throat> reacting, you know, just as fast in the same way. You know, it's like we want to prepare ourselves and know what we want to release, what we want to let go of, what we want to grow beyond. Knowing all the while that we're all just perfect in our imperfection. You know, it's like, the, the the hermeneutic lens that Kabbalah comes from is that like we don't have any guilt or shame about ourselves. We don't feel any wrongness. It's just that everyone has these assignments to to conquer in, in this life. And so we go through what's called tikkun healing or tikkun correction. And so it's just about being in the process for the the sake of it, just for the goodness of it, um, just for all the goodness that it will reveal in you and, and in others, and it will make you a better channel of the light in the world. And so we're doing it for goodness sake, not because we're cursed or we're wrong or we should be ashamed. So when I talk about healing, it's not to to assume that we're damaged or that we're broken or that we're not whole and complete. We are, we're just like peeling away all of the, the conditioning, you know, and all of like the buildup and the grime that, that sticks to us when we go through this life. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's just, you know, uh, the path of a mystic is just like you just have you're always in a state of growth mindedness and expansion and if you get too comfortable for too long then that stagnates um and so yeah it's not to say that uh to continue to work on transformation is implying that you're not ever healed and you're not already whole because we are 
our soul, our, our, our soul is on a journey and on, on a process, but the spirit that's attached to our soul, it's like the spirit is the part of us that's like the purest, deepest part. It's, it's perfectly whole. That's that higher self that, you know, we talk about when we're talking about personal growth. Um, the spirit self. Um, the most fully realized self that's totally connected with the light of God, the light of the creator, um, that has no darkness, that's in complete perfection. So we always have that version of ourselves within us at all times, and it's accessible to us, um, and it can lead us and guide us and, and help and help us, you know, become more of an embodiment of that version of ourselves too. But it's not to say that we don't also fully em embrace our humanity as well and love that part of ourselves too and have compassion for that part of the self. Um, I think that, you know, I love um, the book Mary Magdalene Revealed because it talks about um, Jesus and Mary Magdalene's, you know, relationship and um, the uh, their shared, you know, um, like they, like she was ascending in her soul. So like she was doing that process. When it says Jesus cast seven demons out of Mary Magdalene, Magdalene, it wasn't that she was possessed by seven demons. It was that she was able to transcend those seven powers, those dark powers that hold that 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 grip and seize and hold us from revealing the the real version of that. It's like it conceals that light inside of us until we break through those bonds of that negativity in those different areas of our lives and the different areas of our consciousness. And then the light that's already there can be more fully revealed. But part of it is that we also, as we are transcending those demons, we're doing that by loving the parts of ourselves that those demons wanted us to shame and reject. You know what I mean? So we have to love our, our humanity as well as our divinity. They're both equally important. So the fall of consciousness in Adam and Eve, you know, we in Christian, um, culture it 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 focuses on the curse of it um and that they were damned and full of original sin which the roman empire kind of like led it in that direction but in the hebrew like mystic understanding of that <clears throat> there was a lot more going on under like there's books written in about Genesis, the first few chapters of Genesis, that story of Adam and Eve, whereas in the Bible, the you know, it's just, it's very, like, that's it. That's just like a few lines, you know? And so the, the, the commentary in the Torah and in the Zohar um, <clears throat> talk about how, or particularly from the Kabbalistic point of view, when you're looking at the tree of life, Before the fall of Adam and Eve, they were in this perfected bosom of heavenly, this heavenly realm. It wasn't like the physical toil of earth in the material, material realm where you have to like dig the soil and, you know, break down the wheat to make the bread. There was no need for physical process. So there wasn't actual physical embodiment yet. This was like pre-Big Bang before physical. So it was just these energetic conscious states of being masculine energies and feminine energies. There wasn't a physical existence yet until at the, the, the divine feminine and masculine energies separated from the light of the creator only because of their shame, only because of their guilt. It was the guilt and shame that dropped their them out of affinity with the light so low that they separated from it. They fell from the bosom and the arms of the unity. And it wasn't because of their act. It was because they were ashamed of themselves. And so the vessel 
was created for the process of sharing and building, rebuilding that vessel again to earn, to earn the light <clears throat> through a process um, by practicing, you know, the restriction of, okay, you know, we have to now undo the layers that keep us from being fully separated. And so that is each person's soul path in this life is to break through those layers of negativity to reveal that light within themselves again, but also to be like more and more connected with your awareness and like the feeling of being connected with the light again, that unity of being embraced by a power greater than you and feeling certain that no matter what is happening, even in the midst of challenge and struggle, that it's playing out for your highest good to allow you to, to reach your fuller potential. And there's going to be a plan and you're going to be held and taken care of and you're not going to be forsaken. That, that is being in that heavenly state again, in the kingdom of heaven. And so that's the journey of coming into that sacred union again. Um, you know, and, and we, we participate in that. And so on Rosh Hashanah, it's the birthday of Adam and Eve. And so we all get, or really the Adam came first. So it's the birthday of Adam. And so, and Eve came from Adam. <clears throat> and so it's the birth of the souls of all mankind and we get a new soul. Well, the blowing of the shofar, there's a lot of like mystical elements that that sound awakens these certain levels of um, of light that that we that flow in that break through those shells of negativity, and so we set these intentions when we go in to this feast and this fast and these prayers and these um, you know dancing and singing and scanning um, the Hebrew and you know praying in the Aramaic and you're you're putting your consciousness there so when the shofar blows you're letting and you're releasing and you're imagining all these things being broken away and you're letting them go so that you don't continue on the next year with the same chaos the same pain the same suffering the same toil you can open yourself up to a new path you know it's it's like being born again every year it's like a big altar call you know um i personally have the Christ in my heart. I have been baptized. Um, but I think that the depth that I've come to understand about this is that I have to be a disciple of Christ. It's like when you ask Jesus into your heart or you invite the Christ into your heart, it's like you are saying with your free will, I am, on, I am awakening the Christ consciousness that is already dwelling within me, but I am now willing to participate in this. And I am asking that this process begin with me and that the Christ consciousness energy awakens within me so that I can start dying to the ego layers, right? Ego death, ego death, ego death. Um, and the, the less you hold on to that ego, you know, pride, fears, you know, uh, temptations, addictions, um, ways that you avoid, you know, ways that you sabotage yourself, all of these things, these patterns, you know, it's like you, you're, the point is that you're letting them go so that your soul is unburdened. You're emptying yourself of the small self so that you can be rebirthed and reborn and born again into your higher self. Like, and so every year, this is like a chance to go back and reevaluate yourself and you turn yourself into the heavenly court system and be like, Hey, I need to talk to, you know, and not because you're wrong, but because you're like, ah, oh, I really want to reveal my potential. I want to give more to my family. I want to give more as a friend. I want to give more to the world. I want to stop getting trapped in small self-centered thinking and love myself and take care of myself and nurture myself and know where my boundaries are. But then that way I can show up wholeheartedly and share and give and not be depleted and grasping and struggling and scurrying to survive. So <clears throat> it's, a, it's, a, it's a rebirth of consciousness every year. 
and I really love it. And so I, um, every year that I participate in Rosh Hashanah, I'm just like, wow, I can't believe how much better the year is for me and like what, how much I get from it. But it's also the consciousness that goes into it and around it as well and the preparation. And so the energy of the month of Virgo leading up to Rosh Hashanah is all about reevaluation. Now, have you noticed that, you know, the astrology and all of the other like messages that we've been having in our own Oracle messages together have been just this. It's been talking about digging deep, like all of this stuff is coming up from the subconscious because we can really jump into a new timeline now. And so we are, we are doing that. We are shifting, but it's like we are coming online bit by bit and, and coming alive in this new embodiment and this new version of our life. But we have to start really directing our intention and our focus and, and focus our energy and our actions and our resources on, on what's in alignment with, with that path. And so, um, so yes, yeah, so everything has been pulling up from the subconscious, the last, not even, I mean, I don't know if it's the last bits, but like right now, the current like stuff that's still kind of like keeping you from that next level. And so it's subconscious beliefs and patterns and, and conditioning and habits and like it's like sometimes you just get used to something being a certain way for so long that you're you're just like you get used to fighting against it and you're it's like somebody was saying the other day it was like you get used to things being a certain way and even after they've changed it's like you forget you don't notice that, the, that it's not how it was like you're like oh oh I, I needed someone to shake me and be like hey it's it's changing <laughs> things are changing it's not how it was so you you can like update your feelings now like you can offload some of the, the frustration, right? Like get with the now. Make sure that you're not trapped in like past buildup first and like readjust to what is the current conditions. <clears throat> and then also, what was, oh, oh yeah. Um, I was watching a Matt Hussey video today and he was talking about how, um, when he got too comfortable, like, like there was a certain point at the, like early in his career and I, I'm feeling him on this because he was like, you know, you, you put yourself out there and you like, whether it be professionally or in love or whatever, you put yourself out there, you have to take a risk and you have to be willing to take a punch. He's a boxer. Um, so that is very metaphorical, but it's really true. It's like, you got to go in on your terms, knowing that if you don't put yourself out there, nothing is going to happen. You'll keep yourself safe but nothing will happen. If you go out and you try to make your dreams come true, you you say like, you show interest and like you're willing to be like, okay, well, I might get rejected, but that's just the way it is. And eventually, like I'm gonna be resilient. This is not gonna kill me, but I'm just gonna keep moving on. And that like, I'm not gonna get anything if I don't put myself out there, right? You're just gonna sit and wonder and you're not gonna have options and choices. If you sit and wait for everything to come to you, you have less choices, you have less options. So it's good to put yourself out there and take risks so it gives you options, but you have to be willing to take a hit. And so he was just talking about how he was so used to taking hits that it just got to where he was just like, all right, well, I'm just comfortable getting hit in the face all the time now. <laughs> like I've just grown used to it. And so he got a little bit of success, but it, it was still like he was still getting taking, taking hits, but he had just kind of grown used to that, that discomfort. And he had to be brought out of that complacency. And so, yeah, like I'm, I'm, you know, just like getting into this, like all this like energy is coming over me to just like get refocused and like get more disciplined. I think I was just like tired and just kind of in like the uh, highway hypnosis mode when you've just been driving along for like out like an hour and you're like, wait, I have been in a trance. I don't know how long, like, you know what I mean? And you're like, what, how many miles have I gone? How did I run, run off the road? Who was driving? That's kind of how I felt like, you know, recently and, um, or, you know, just, I don't know, over the past several weeks or so, um, just kind of just feeling like, I don't know. It's just, there's a lot, there's a lot to do all the time. It's hard to keep up with everything. 
<laughs> but I don't know. It's just sometimes you, you find the resilience and the resources within yourself to reconnect with your fire and your drive and your passion. And then you're like, okay, I know how I can hone in my focus and energy again. And I'm not going to like dissipate it in all these different ways. I'm going to get honed in and I'm going to be disciplined and follow through. And I'm not going to be spinning my wheels on things that are busy, but not productive. Right? So these are all things that we can be evaluating right now. <clears throat> Nexus was our first card that came out. And immediately I was like, oh yes, it's like everything is becoming clear about how it's all connected. Right? All, I mean, the freaking the I left the door open the other day and like a bunch of flies got in and I've just been like trying to like get them out of the house like all week and I finally <laughs> felt like I had gotten rid of them and like oh, there's one just like they always like to hang out right next to me by my window so I think it's funny that these flies are here but it's like I don't know flies to me are just like the irritant what is it what's bugging you what's coming up what's hanging over you um how is it connected in Kabbalah one they teach us to say it's like pause what a pleasure. Why is this in my movie? How is this all connected? Um, what does it all mean? And so it's like knowledge was the next card. And so it's like we're finally seeing how everything is all connected, how our patterns have been connected with the way that our life has been playing out and how the lessons that we've experienced with different situations and people and circumstances, like what they were really trying to tell us and what maybe driving motivators that we were unconscious of have been driving our impulses all this time. So we're finally seeing how it's all connected. We're even appreciating the people who've caused us challenges, pain, suffering, because they were playing a very important role too. Um, there's a prayer called the, um, the Bistul, the Bistul, I, I can't remember the, the prayer of Bistul maybe, um, but it's the prayer of self-emptying and it's like a voluntary death every day where you, there's one part where you have to say, and I completely forgive fill in the blank and you and you insert a name there and I like to do it whoever's just impulsively comes out in that moment I completely forgive so and so because I know that all that they did to me and all that they said was from the creator and for my highest good and so that I just realized I've got candle soot all over my fingers but that is something that I've really come to understand um as a Kabbalah student and, and really I started ingraining into myself and accepting it by say, put saying that, that line in that prayer, that's not the full prayer. It's just one of the lines. Um, but it, it makes you think it's like, okay, it's not that their actions were justified or right, but there was something about that situation that the creator felt would serve me to awaken me to something that I needed to see. Awaken me to different depths of my own resilience. Something that needed to make you stronger or more compassionate or wiser. Maybe you were playing a part in someone else's process that they needed and you don't even know why you made that move or did that thing you're like I don't know why I was compelled to do that you know and it's like you have to be really careful about not letting this just justify your wrong actions it's not to say that you don't have remorse or that you don't make things right um but you don't carry shame you don't carry guilt those are different than remorse um being remorseful and sorry and apologetic and owning your part in something is different than feeling guilty and shame guilt and shame that's what caused the fall of adam and eve that's what caused the separation of the divine masculine and feminine from the wholeness of the creator from that holy holy threesome as i call it um that uh supernal triad <clears throat> And that's how we fell from the bosom of perfection. 
into a need for a process of healing because of the shame and the guilt. And so also in Kabbalah, we learned that the adversary, um, also known as the Satan, there's a masculine Satan and then there is a feminine Satan. And the masculine Satan is sent to tempt you and push you and challenge you and create chaos <laughs> um, in all the ways that will ultimately push you to reveal your highest self, essentially. It's like you're, he's your nemesis. Um, and he's not your friend, he, but he has a job. And it, he has been assigned, even though he has been cast out of heaven, he has an assignment of God to do God's dirty work. And Satan is not more powerful than God. Satan is the enemy of God and Satan is evil. Um, we're not liking Satan, but we're just understanding our opponent and who, what we're dealing with. So we can understand the chessboard better and how we can use our enemy, like in Kung Fu, the force of our opponent for actually our own, like you can reverse it back on them. I don't know, I can't remember how they, they put that, but you know what I mean. Use their own force against them. You just manipulate the energy that they're exerting and you exert less force. So when the, the adversary, the, the male adversary, the male Satan comes uh, to trick you or make you stumble, it's what you do from there that will determine if he gets to take your light and put it on the side of darkness or if you get to take that light back and recapture the spark, the sparks of light. And so the female Satan comes around right after you make the mistake and maybe, you know, this booby trap was always set up in your script, right? So the female Satan comes in and makes you feel like you are worthless, that you are unforgivable, that you are unlovable. All the guilt, all the shame drags you down into darkness and despair. You lose the light when you fall into despair, when you totally lose hope, when you give up. Um, so the, the guilt, the shame, it's like you've got all your points are being sucked out like ding, 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 ding. And, and they're going and they're making that side of the dark heavier and heavier and heavier. And you've got more process to go through, to cut through those shells, to get back out again and, and, and get that light flowing through you again to reveal that light. So Th thinking of it to me like this interactive game, like once you are an active spiritual student and a participant in your process, it's like you've set, like you've turned on the, um, the simulation, the, the avatar is created, the matrix is on. Um, and there's going to be you can just always expect it at every level. It's not that you, it's, it's just part of it. It's not you, it's not personal. It's for everyone at every level. It's not actually for everyone. If you're a spiritual student, you're gonna get it worse than everybody else. You're also under direct supervision of the light. So if you do something that you know is wrong, you'll get an immediate like backlash for it. Um, so it's like once you turn on the game, you're no longer the Sims people. You're in, a, you're in another game. And so you can expect that the challenges will come and they're going to be like in Mario, the little, little bad guys, and they might look different in every, every level. And you'll have different challenges also in every level, but just know that they're coming and you don't have to take it personally, right? Cause that's the female Satan. Oh, why is this always happening to me? I'm so cursed. No, you're in the freaking game. And you're like the Mandalorian. You're like, um, you know, any one of the heroes on the hero's journey. Like you're, that's, you're getting your badass like spine out there, like taking the hits. You're, you're, you're facing the fire, right? You're out in the process. So 
don't take it personally, just meet the challenges and pause. What a pleasure. Why is this in my movie? What is really trying to be revealed in the situation for my highest good? Um, how can this change me for the better? How can this show me where I need to grow? How can this show me where I need to be more sharing, right? How, how can this um, help wield me and turn my lead into gold? So we're, we're, we're starting to understand, so we're seeing how it's all connected. Knowledge, the spine, this like alignment, right? It's all so straight and long um, and, and tall. And so, and this, this, this mind is open, right? There's not even, you know, there's no shell around this brain and there are flowers growing out of it. And there are birds flying around like inspiration and messages coming in from, from divine They're blue, blue, blue um, birds. So blue is a met like healing energy and divine um, communication. Um, next we have reward. So this really to me was like, reminded me of the whole like new soul on Rosh Hashanah. It's like this person is standing and they're so proud. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a good job. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. I'm proud of myself. Um, and it's so funny too, because I, like, when Jesus was on the cross, there were the, the other thieves behind him. And it's like we are, we're getting our new soul. We're being born again. And we're embracing our humanity. Jesus said to that man, it's an honor to die with you today. And so we're going to honor that by trying to care enough for ourselves and for for others and for our our creator that we're going to try really hard to evaluate and to decide okay what in me do I want to grow what do I want to embrace what parts of me have I rejected out of fear that I was going to be abandoned, that I need to love and that I need to reintegrate and that I need to um, care for or nurture or rehabilitate, right? So because we're going to prepare ourselves and we're going to follow through, it's like we're, things are really turning around. Positive changes are coming um, and we're really stepping into that new dawn. It's just that Getting past old patterns is, is some heavy lifting sometimes, um, but great rewards, right? To feel inner peace, to feel unprompted happiness is such a gift. To feel lighthearted and free um, and confident, even in moments, even in glimpses, what a gift, right? So all of this is necessary, but it's priceless. And to build faith and certainty, that's beyond a gift. That's miraculous. That's, that's when you're in the miracle zone and miracles flow. And so there you are in the miracle zone when miracles flow. So looking at how everything has been connected and being even able to appreciate those challenges and knowing that just as though you've been instrumental in others, you know, people's lives, though that person and their actions are instrumental into yours if you allow it to be, if you look at it with the right consciousness, um, you know, and embrace something about what happened that the creator wanted you to see in that situation. And, it, and remember, it doesn't mean that that was right, right? Like, it doesn't mean that if somebody, you know, like, abused you or something that they were excused. It, it just means that, you know, maybe by you, maybe you realized how you were like, you woke up and you were able to, to speak out, you know, um, and they made you more resilient after the fact, after you healed, you realized how strong you were to overcome it. Um, it doesn't excuse something that they did, 
but there there maybe is some strength that you drew because of it or maybe it helps you be, be even more able to connect with others who have been through the same um, so there's there's something that can be gleaned like if somebody says something that seems unfair to you and like somebody comes at you in a really harsh way and they like spew out at you like and they've got a bunch of stuff inside and they're just like Marr. and like maybe that's not excusable maybe they did like like cross the line but was there anything in that that maybe like they weren't justified to say it but maybe the creator wanted you to hear it because of something else right? Or something deeper, right? Maybe that person was tripping, but maybe there was something in what they were saying that you needed in that moment. And that's, I'm not saying that, like, I, I, that happened to me recently. Like somebody like, came at me unpleasantly and I was like, <sighs> but then I was like, yeah, I mean, that was like, I needed this moment. Like it was, there was, I saw that the creator had sent me a message in it and you know, so, but revelation was our last, um, last card and so yeah it's like this we're having a revelation about ourselves and so now we're able to actually make empowered proactive choices and change that will help um that will help actually maybe you know change going forward so be of good heart be of good hope um we're getting to the bottom of it <laughs> and you know we're seeing how it's all connected we we're, we're understanding, you know, the, the value of, of even the hard things that we've been through and we're being able to embrace like our good side too. I know I was just doing this magnetic self challenge with to be magnetic and it, we, you have to write this letter or like things about yourself that you're like really proud of. And, and sometimes that's not always easy for me to, to say all of that about myself. Sometimes I'm afraid to be proud of myself. Like I'll, like I'll be punished for it I'll, or I'll get backlash or like the things that I'm proud of will be attacked or taken from me. And that's conditioned thinking of the past. And so like it was, it was difficult. So don't be afraid to also acknowledge you know, the parts of you that are really great, you know, and, and focus on that too. So yeah, be excited and proud of how far you've come and just be of good hope because you're being washed anew. You're getting a new soul on Rosh Hashanah and going forward, you know, you can take steps to be, you know, a, a brand new person. Every, new, every day is a new day. Every minute is a new minute. Every hour is a new hour. Um, and so Revelation is helping you go through this transformation right now. And great things are coming. So reward, reward, revelation, knowledge, how it's all connected. I, I just think this is going to be a good week. Um, it may, there may be moments of challenge, but pay attention to what triggers you. Because if it's like, if something is like, ugh, like getting you disturbed, like that's, that's the thing. That's the thing that's coming up. That's like, Hey, you can heal me now. You can pay attention to me and, 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 and see how this is making you impulsive. Okay. All right, y'all. Well, I am going to also make our anchor message video. See y'all in a minute. Ciao.